Hey guys, Prophetess Carwell here from House of Many Mantles Global and Angelic Finds Boutique. Um, I'm here bringing another part of the Kingdom Spouses re uh, Revelation Word. And I just wanted to add a little bit to the first two that I recently released as God has been impressing on my heart to release more so yeah uh so i'm calling this one kingdom marriages part three you're about to meet and today is october 30th 2022 and so, beloved, God has a unique word for you today. The Lord is saying that you are about to meet your kingdom spouse. You are going to meet face to face. You're going to know who they are. You're going to know that they've been sent and assigned to you, that they've been ordained by God for you. You are about to meet. The Lord showed me in Genesis 24, after the preparation of Rebecca, that it was the divine time appointed for the two to finally meet. It, the time had finally arrived. And so if we remember in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, um, it, the word says that everything, for everything, there is a time and a season. And actually in the New Living Translation, um, it says a, a time for every activity under heaven, right? Every purpose. Some translations, the King James Version says every purpose. But there is every purpose, every activity that God has ordained for us in our life that is written in the books have a time. They have a Kairos time. Yes, friend, there's an ordained time. Remember in Genesis chapter 24, um, in verse 58, it said, And they called Rebekah and said unto her, Will thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands, of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah and went his way. God says that this is your time to meet. You're about to come face to face with the one that God has ordained to walk this walk with you in the name of Jesus. And and to the daughters of Zion, the Lord says he is going to wonder at you. He's going to marvel at everything about you. He's going to stand in awe of you. He's going to be so mesmerized by you because he's not used to seeing someone like you. He's going to be so overjoyed and ecstatic in his spirit that even if he doesn't say right away or even express it right away, um, just know that in his heart, it is Mary. He is thinking about you. He is thinking of you and he is thanking God for you. Uh, so the Lord says, be still because he's mesmerized by you. And so you may not see the initial reaction or emotion that you seek, but the Lord says, trust me, he's mesmerized by you. Verse 21 in uh, Genesis 24 said, and the man wondering at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. You're going to be so different, so anomaly 
that he does not know how to take you, woman of God. He does not know, is this a joke? Is someone playing a prank on me? Am I being bamboozled? Sons of God, the Lord says, no, you have not been bewitched. You have been blessed. Receive her for she is a gift and an honor and a reward and favor from me. Hallelujah, Jesus. So you are about to finally see your kingdom spouse. You're going to know that he's going to be mesmerized by you. And the Lord says that no one, and I mean no one, will be able to speak concerning it. They're not going to be able to speak good or bad over it because God's going to shut the mouth of the naysayers. And even those who pretend to be happy, but secretly despise and talk against it, they're not going to be able to say a word. In Genesis 24, 50 through 51, this is what it says, friend. It says, then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, the thing proceeded from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go and let her be thy master's son's wife as the Lord has spoken. Listen, when God speaks, everything stands at attention. Hallelujah. Friend, you're going to know that God's about to bless you with this kingdom spouse because Every other area in your life is going to receive blessings too. You're going to see blessings on the job, favor on the job. People are just going to be seeing your hard work. They're going to see the favor over you. You're going to be rewarded on the job. You're just going to be seeing all of these unique um, and, and memorable blessings that you hadn't you know, had never seen before. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, the job, they mailed me a card just saying, thank you for your hard work. Friends and family are finally going to come out and say, hey, we, we appreciate you. You're just going to be blessed all across the board, girl. The Bible says that before your kingdom spouse arrives, you will have been in a season where multiple gifts have been bestowed upon you and even your entire household will be blessed by God. It says Rebecca was gift with jewels, gold, silver, and even friend, new raiments. You all know new raiments represent new clothes. And if you haven't watched my first video on new season, new clothes, you ought to watch it. I'll put the link in the description box. But new raiment means new clothes, means new season, means God's doing something new, a new thing. And Rebecca was gift raiments, new clothes, new stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Even her mother and her brother also were given precious things. Other translations say expensive things, okay? I'm just saying, y'all. Verse 22 says, And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. Verse 40, 47 says, And I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcai bare unto him. And I put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. And the servant, verse 53 says, Brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And gave them to Rebecca. And he gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. Listen, you go, Rebecca got gift and earring in her nose, bracelets. Girl, she was off the chain, okay? She was blessed from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. And those around her received an overflow. This kingdom marriage is going to bless not only you, but those around you. The Lord says also that you're going to be blessed by the most high God. You're going to be blessed of the Lord. Your friends and family will receive instantly. Verse 28 says, And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. Verse 29, And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man unto the well. 
verse 30. And it came to pass when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hands. And when he heard the words of Rebekah, his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well. Verse 31 says, And he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord. Okay, wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. Listen, why are you out there, son-in-law? Why are you out there, daughter-in-law? Come into the house. Come into the family. You are blessed of the blessed. You are blessed of the Most High God. You are an absolute blessing to this family. Come in. Why are you standing on the outside? You are not an outsider. Hallelujah. This is going to be a divine season for you friends this is going to be a time where you're going to actually see what it feels like to be worth something in the sight of god and man because this man that is coming this kingdom spouse of yours he's not coming empty-handed he knows you're a blessing he knows that there's no other woman like you he knows that you have been cultivated in the presence of god and the glory of god he knows that you're crowned with with the confidence and the law of god he knows that the the word of the lord is written on the tablets of your heart and that your eyes are only going to be on him and on no one else so he's coming listen he's coming to bag and tag okay he is coming to bring bring jewels, gifts. He's coming to make sure he lets you know that he's not letting you get away. He's making sure he lets you know that you are his and he and um, he is yours. Okay. And so be ready to receive, be ready to have your hands and, and arms and face and whatever else that he's going to jewel and cover up hallelujah thank you jesus be ready don't be you know don't don't rob yourself of a blessing but receive the blessing of the lord because he's coming with flowers he's coming hallelujah with chocolates and he's just ready to wine and dine the gift of god and so the lord says if you are ready for this kingdom spouse you have to be a woman of god who is able to follow verse 61 says and rebecca arose and her damsels and they rode upon the camels and followed the man and the servant took rebecca and went his way listen rebecca did not just follow the servant of the lord she was following the angel of the lord who was orchestrating the entire thing so women of god you have got to know how to follow listen if you can't follow the servants of god if you can't follow the you know your your bishop your pastor your apostle your prophet whoever is instructing and mentoring you in this hour how on earth are you going to be able to follow your kingdom spouse? How are you going to be able to follow your husband? <clears throat> so I need all of you, Rebecca's, you daughters of Zion, to be able to follow. Listen, the Lord is also saying in this hour, that the man, while the woman is being taught how to follow, the man is being taught how to lead. He's being taught how to be bold. He's being taught how to speak his mind. He's being taught how to cover his ho his household, his family, his wife. He's being taught how to come out of that shyness and come out of that timidity and start coming into some strength, some boldness. He's going to be strong as a lion. The man is going to be in the field. He's going to be working. He's going to be waiting, <clears throat> but he's also going to be meditating on the word of the Lord. He's going to be meditating on the promise that you would one day come and would one day arrive. Verse 62 and 63 says this, and Isaac came from the way of the well, Laha Roy, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at eventide. Listen, you're not going to spend your nights in nobody's club and bars and out on the streets. You're going to, these kingdom men are going to spend their evening in prayer. These kingdom men are going to spend their evening uh, in the fields, working it, waiting. Hallelujah. They're going to be working. They're going to have good jobs where they work. And while they work, God's going to give them the time to meditate on the word of the Lord. Just like Isaac was out 
at the well. The well represents a place of drink. Uh, remember the Lord Jesus is the well in which we never thirst again. The camels, this chapter is loaded with imagery, symbolisms, parables, stuff to decipher and get deeper revelations from. These camels all up and in, in this chapter, they represent the glory of God. They represent nothing being able to be done without God. They represent the impossible becoming obtainable. Hallelujah. Isaac was out doing the work while his favor was on the way to be delivered. Men of God, sons of man, you're going to have to know how to work while you wait. Work the word, work in prayer, pray for the woman that you are seeking. Pray that pray for that divine appointment that you won't miss it, that you won't run her away, that you won't um, abuse or misuse or mistreat or misharm the blessing that God has been cultivating and set apart and creating just for you. Hallelujah. It says, and, um, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. Isaac was in the field working in meditation, praying in prayer on his knees, prostrate in the presence of the Lord, praying probably for God knows what, you know, he had just lost Sarah, his mother, his father was getting old. And so who knows what Isaac was out there praying about, but it says when he lifted up his eyes and saw, notice if there's a comma there. So it's like he saw something that is yet to be written. And so I believe Isaac saw a vision. He had a revelation. He received some type of visit or visitation, um, a visual or a vision showing him that his kingdom spouse was on the way. He saw, I believe, Rebecca in the spirit because it says he, um, as the camels were yet coming, so they weren't quite there yet. They were still afar, but yet in the spirit during meditation, he saw her coming and, and she saw him in the natural. It says, and he saw in the spirit, you know, he saw and, um, and behold, the camels were coming. And I told you camel is symbolic of something that is impossible to accomplish without God's help. So Rebecca looked up, my God, glory be to God. Rebecca looked up and asked, it said, and Rebecca lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, see, there was no comma after when she saw, because she didn't see in the spirit. She saw in the natural. Isaac had a comma after the word saw because he saw in the spirit. He God is going to show these kingdom men the women that are coming so that when they arrive, they <laughs> make no mistake about it. These are not devil sent. These are not demonic women. These are kingdom women sent, covered by God, clothed by God, touched by God, anointed by God. Hallelujah. It says, and the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. He told Isaac everything his father had done regarding Rebecca and his marriage. So the father, hallelujah, Jesus is speaking to you men, daughters of God, daughters of Zion, stand still, be patient. The Lord's speaking to him. He's going to hear the instructions. The Lord is about to speak in his ears and he will receive the word of the Lord. It says, and the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. Everything that God is doing, nothing left out. No important detail will be left out. 67 says, and Isaac brought her into his mother's Sarah's tent. Once he gets the confirmation from the Lord, sister, girl, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Once he knows that he knows that he know, 
y'all are going to be set. You're going to be good. He's not going to waste another minute letting you go by where another man could possibly snatch you up from him. He's going to go ahead, move you in and move by faith and love you for all of your the days of your life. It says that um, he moved Sarah in his mother's tent, took Rebecca and she instantly became his wife and he loved her and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Listen, Isaac did not take Rebecca before the servant had to reveal all that had been done regarding Rebecca. So women of God, unless they hear from the Lord, they're not going to propose. They're not going to go all in until they hear the instructions. So daughters of Zion, guess what we need to do? We need to pray that their ears be open. We need to pray that they receive once their ears are open. Hallelujah, Jesus. Men of God, just know that when you do decide to propose and pull that ring out of your pocket, know that it is the father who will give her away. She has been covered by God. He is going to um, release her to you. Even though a natural father may walk her down the aisle or not, just know that Holy Spirit will be with her on that day. He, everything about her and you and your union will be ordered by God. He will definitely orchestrate the entire event and it will be historical written on the pages of heaven and he will be the third cord that's wrapped around the two of you. It says that when Rebecca lifted up her eyes and she saw Isaac, that she lighted off the camel and she said to the servant, what man is this? What, who is this walking in the field to meet us? And the servant said, it is my master. And it says, therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. Daughters of Zion, when this man comes to you, he's, you don't have to say a thing. God's going to already instruct him that you are a daughter who has been covered by God. Hallelujah. Men of God, she is behind the veil at the moment. But praise Jesus, you're about to meet. And let me tell you, the doors are open for you to walk through if you want to walk through it. Because God does not ever overstep the boundaries of our free will. And if you won't make the move, guess what? He's going to take her to someone else who will. Why? Because just because you don't want to or you, you're going to let your fear make you miss this moment because she has been faithful, God's going to find her another who has been faithful. Same thing with you women. If you are too afraid to go all in when he comes, God's not going to make the man suffer because you're not ready. That's your free will. You can be lonely, broke, busted, and disgusted all your life if you want to, okay? But the, the sons of man, those that have been faithful, if she denies your proposal, do not quit. Don't get mad. God has another. He's not going to overstep these free will boundaries that we have but if both parties are willing to be blessed by god then the doors are open revelation 3 7 says these things says he who is holy he who is true he who has the key of david he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens i know your works see i have set before you an open door and no one can shut it hallelujah the two of you when you walk through these doors mark 10 and 9 says what therefore god have joined together let no man put asunder that word asunder means to scatter in other words nothing will be able to break your marriage into pieces in fact you're going to be so sturdy you're going to be like a palm tree bendable no matter what storm hits your way you're going to bend through it and stand straight and tall afterwards hallelujah so men of god moral of the story you need to meditate while you wait women of god moral of the story you need to sit still and let him be in awe of you and be mesmerized by your beauty and your glory and your anointing. He's taking it all in. Let the man look at you for a minute. Let him um, 
just go all in and, and be rejoiceful and merry in his heart. Let him be giddy in his spirit, okay? And let him just thank the Lord that he finally found you. Let him gather his thoughts because he's probably speechless. And let him just move by the anointing and the grace of God. Because everything this man is going to do regarding you, it's going to be so romantic. Remember in part two, he's going to have the traits of a romantic um I don't know what they call him, like a um, hopeless romantic. He's going to be so sweet and sincere and endearing. You're, it's going to be worth the wait. I promise. I've seen this in the spirit and what God has shown me, I can't unsee it. So worship while you wait and worship even while doing warfare for him or her. Because trust me, when God is raising up a Pharaoh, I mean, when God is raising up a Moses, Satan is raising up a Pharaoh to oppress and come against that Moses. But Moses, you will stand strong. Rebecca, you will arise on that camel and be lifted up on high. Um, and you, Isaac, you will be in the field and you will get a visitation and you will see the instructions of the Lord. So Father God, I just pray for them right now. I pray for your sons of, and your daughters. I pray for every last one of them in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And I just ask that they be, um, that your sons be covered. I prophesy that they shall be formed of the particles of God. I speak life. I speak the Ruach. I speak the breath of God into their souls and every aspect of their being. I pray you are even eating from the tree of life and drinking from that well, um, bear Laharoy like Isaac, where you will never thirst again for the unrighteous woman or the Jezebelic woman, but you will now be fully fed fed, fat, and flourishing in the land flowing with milk and honey with your kingdom spouse. I pray that the Lord will look upon you and have respect for your offerings. Hallelujah, Jesus. I pray that like Enoch and, and Noah, that your walk is with God. I pray that you do all that the Lord God has commanded of you, man of God. I pray that may you be found just. I pray that you be found perfect, man of God. I pray that you will not only be found just, but perfect in your generation, man of God. And I pray Proverbs 20 and 7 that you will walk upright in integrity man of God I pray that you will be a devout counselor like Joseph man of God and I pray most of all that you are walking in the presence and the glory of God God bless and say la and I can't wait to hear your testimonies Yes, you are mine, no matter.